Hi guys, I hope you all are doing fine. Today we are going to see a video on what exactly happens inside the socket. So basically on socket healing. So this video is a base video for a huge network of topics that we are going to discuss in the future. They are going to be interlinked. Okay, so welcome you all to Dr. Febel Huda's Dental Encyclopedia. So there are about five stages of healing that we are going to discuss in this topic. And then we are going to see them in detail what actually happens in them. So the first what actually happens is after I extract the teeth, it travels into the first stage of healing that is basically a clot formation. So this clot is formed by the degradation of red blood cells and white blood cells and the coagulating factors. Now it moves on to the second stage of healing that happens in about four to five days. In this, the clot gets replaced by granulation tissues. On the third stage that happens around 14 to 16 days, this granulation tissue, it gets slowly replaced by connective tissue. Now, what is connective tissue? Connective tissue is a collective of spindle-shaped fibroblast, collagen, and ground substances. Now, this moves on to the fourth stage. That is actually the conversion of this connective tissue to bone. Okay, so it starts to get ossification. Now, this actually happens in the first week itself, but it starts from the base of the socket and the sides of the socket. And it starts to completely fill the entire socket only after six weeks. Now keep this time frame in mind because when we are discussing the future topics about implant placement like immediate implant placement, delayed implant placement and early implant placements, this stages of healing is going to be of prime importance. So going on to the fifth stage, in this you have two things that we are going to see. One is the soft tissue closure over the socket that happens from about 24 to 35 days. So this epithelial closure takes about one month when you can see approximately. And the entire bone, substantial fill of bone, that also happens in around 5 to 10 weeks. So even though this bone gets substantially filled in about 5 to 10 weeks, now, is this bone matured enough to place our implants? Because 10 weeks is like somewhere around two months to two and a half months. Now, that is totally going to depend on where this bone is going to be. So, it's going to be in the mandibular arch. It's going to be a cortical replacement. It's going to be a cancellous replacement. And how much amount of native bone that is going to be in the base. So, when we are going to discuss about immediate implant placements, all these terminologies that I'm going to use and these techniques are going to be of prime importance. So, we will be see them, seeing them in detail in the future videos. Now, the question here is, is this bone mature enough? Now, even though the maturation, that is the osteogenic activity, slows down in about 8 weeks, it takes a total of 16 weeks for it to completely stop. That means, the complete maturation of your bone takes around 16 weeks. Now, do we have to wait so long to place an implant? No. Again, these time frames keep them in mind so that when we are correlating with the implant placements time frame it will be much easier for you to understand how the body behaves and how you can utilize them to your advantage okay now we have seen how the bone is getting filled in the socket and how the socket is getting matured now is this all going to be uh, you know like a fairy tale bone is going to completely form up and you're going to have a good volume of bone in the end of the case now is there going to be a loss in the height and width of the bone in the future when it starts to heal now there are a lot of researchers that have been gone into this particular topic and they have come to an understanding that there is a substantial loss in width as well as height Okay, so when uh, they have concluded and finding out how much of width is lost and how much of height is lost, they have found that there is more of a loss in height compared to the loss in width. Now, this all researchers are done 
under a condition where the extraction is done very atraumatically or mean with minimal trauma but if you are going to do an aggressive extraction or a traumatic extraction where you are going to break the buccal bone or you have compressed the socket or is there a long standing infection like a periodontal infection that has caused loss of bone then the entire calculation of how much of bone is going to be lost from the vertical as well as from the horizontal is going to be varying so to prevent this so there has going to be a, a classification that's going to be discussed in the next video which will be discussing on the classification of extracted sockets so there are going to be different types of extracted sockets depending on the defect and the grafting procedures for each and every type of socket so those that is a video that is going to be coming next so see you guys in the next video so till then this is dr fable signing off